start recording. Hi, good afternoon. I was going to start by showing you a couple books that I had gotten just recently, and then we're going to do a project out of one of the books. Hi, Allie. So the first one I got is called The Organic Artist, and it's about making your own supplies. And it goes into making your own paint, paper, pens, pigments, prints, and nature. And it's about gathering these things from outside. It's about using raw materials. It is not about necessarily ordering the pigment powders like a lot of the recipes are. But I thought it had some interesting recipes for inks to try and it talked about um, an iron vinegar solution which is used in some inks to make them um, stronger I guess I don't know it's in, used in the walnut ink and then also hide glue which is used as a substitute for gum arabic sometimes in some of the recipes and then they talked about making watercolors which is really what I was looking for um, I can't say in any of the three books that I bought I learned anything different than I did on the internet um, but I did order from a different company a little booklet and they sell a primer set and they also sell um, a watercolor like um, medium. And I, I, from what I could guess, it was gum arabic, honey, and glycerin. Like it's already mixed up and you just add it to the pigments with maybe a little bit of distilled water. So, and I got to order the, the Mueller and the glass. So I'm going to order that, but I'm waiting until we can afford it. That's a summer project anyways. The second book was I got the same book that Xander had shown last week called Modern Florals. And it just really shows you how to draw some florals. And then when you come to the back of the book, it talks about putting it together into wreaths. And I can't say that it's really that much different than the other little book um, that I had bought. But I've marked some that I wanted to try, that I was interested in. But this is the book that Xander had that I really was interested in. And basically, it's an ocean-themed drawing book. And it focuses on the shape, what she calls star, branch, then spiral, then fan. So I went in and marked... And I'm not going to go through the book page by page. Sandra did a really good job of that. But you can sort of see the kind of pieces that this artist does. So I went through and marked some of the pages. Like, there's how she does her starfish. She just gave some examples of things that have a star shape. She walks through the mechanics of it. There were some simple shapes that she had that I marked that page because I thought that would be easy to kind of add in as a filler. Some of her is in almost entangle like. And then there's the starfish again, just kind of in a line drawing. And I also liked this one. I thought that would be fairly easy to recreate. Though I will say it was harder than it looked. And then she had some reference sheets that I thought were good to remember for different shapes of leaves when you're going to draw in your foliage. And this is where it starts with the branches or the fractals. And the coral fan. So like if you were going to draw coral, this is really good references. Then she broke it down into some mechanics of drawing it. Then she had a good reference page for shells and some of the other things that she say 
is using the spiral. <clears throat> and this broke down how to do this, like the whelk shell. And then jellyfish. And some more leaves. But they're in that fan shape or that round. She's even got a breakdown like for doing beta fish. I don't I didn't mark this one, but I thought this one was good because it's a type of um coral or mushroom like looking. And she broke down the fan shape. One of the shapes that she uses a lot that I was really drawn to were these. Let me find one in the front of the book. It'll show up good on the camera. Were these circles. And then she'll do something interesting in them. They're just kind of blobs. Um... Those are, have more of a transparent layer. They're in almost all of her work. And then you just start looking. Well, there's a circle with circles. And she's added a stem to make it like a flower. Um, I thought these were an interesting shape. So what I did was, while Kathy was on, I sketched some preliminary type shapes that I could cut out and use, that I could add some color to and then cut out and use. I also took some paper that Carol sent and used a hole punch to make some of the shapes. And I thought those would be in a good in a base. Um, I'm not sure what background I want to do it on. I know I'm going to use those. I thought about putting it on black. Um, I think I'm going to do a composition on this jelly print of something, but I'm not sure what. And this was just other watercolor paper. Um, some of the other papers that Carol sent that I might use is this right here and this right here cut up I thought might be interesting. Hi Judy. Hi Jeannie. And this, if you're watching on YouTube, this is a live stream. Alright. So let me get a piece of regular watercolor that's nothing on it. And a piece of black. If I have it. Well, I don't have any black. Okay, so there's just some regular watercolor. Let's take one of these. I'd started a project on it and then got sidetracked. And let's put black paint on it. I'm going to put just regular lamp black. And then I'm going to add, when I get that on there, I'm going to add some PBO blue black. When I find it. We'll add some of that in there just to give it. And we'll do we'll work on two compositions. I don't know what I want to use. I thought about using these, but some of them work and some of them won't. I don't know what the deal is. Um, when you put them together, and I follow the directions and put them together, there's this little container with a hole, which ink should, not ink, but watercolor, should go in and lead down. I wonder if storing it this way now it works if I take them out but I probably bleeds too much I don't know. A few of them will will start and some of them won't. So I really haven't figured that one out yet. So I don't know if I'm going to use those or not. That's good. 
fairly decent sized brush. Like I said, I'm not worried about what's drawn on here because I'm going to cover it up. And this is watercolor weight paper too. It's 140 pounds. Which is the weight that I like to collage on and the sketches I did are on the lighter weight drawing paper. I thought that would be better for collage. Not the base, but as elements to collage. Let's put some of this PBO out. I'm just going to get some of that sheen. I'm going to add a little bit of water to my brush just to make it a little easier to move it. Because it is a thicker acrylic. And I'm going to find a stencil while wow, that's kind of a little wet. And do a little bit of wipe. Well, it'll be just kind of a pattern in a pattern. Looking for one that looks sort of like this, but it's big. Bubbles, real quick. I know it's in here, I saw it. sideways I'm 
and I'm just going to take some of that heavier PBO off. dry. Like I said, you pro can you see just a little bit? It just took some of that and put a little bit of a pattern. So I'm going to let that dry. And for the white piece, do we want to just do like ocean colors? Let's get this black off here. I thought about using the dilution sprays. It's that or the magicals. So what do we want to Thought about doing the dilution sprays. The sprays? Okay. And I'm not going to worry about the fact that I'm going to glue over it and because I'm just looking for a background. It's kind of ocean like. this wet and then I'm going to take a piece of paper that's this is something I don't think I'm going to finish I just don't like the way where I was going with it so I'm just going to lay it to blot and soak up some of this color and it's another piece of paper that's just got some scratch stuff on it and we won't waste that spray We'll let that sort of soak in the paper. Whatever's on this, some of it came off. But I don't care. It's blue, purpley. Dry this real quick.
Okay. So that's our base. So that gives us two bases to work on. Let's start with adding some color to these. But we want more control. So, okay. On this one, it's got lots of purples and orange in it and some blues, and it's stamped in black. I'm going to use that on the this paper, I think. And on this one, I'm going to use this as some of my base. I don't think I'm going to use that. And then I'm going to do some filling in on the paper and drawing. I'm not sure. I don't have any um, texture plates, embossing. I don't have a big shot or anything like that, so I don't have any um, embossing plates, texture plates. I don't have any of that. Okay, so let's get let's avoid the blues and greens for right now and let's go with the yellows and the oranges and the reds in the watercolor and let's add some color in here to these three things and I'm going to cut these so I'm not worried and I'll cover my pencil marks with ink or white paint pen as we finish it up so I'm just focusing on these three shapes right here and this is going to go on here so let's start with well I need to start with some clean water real quick how it always happens but I have a roll of paper towels and then they get moved I'm going to start with a bright yellow and kind of an orange color And you could use uh, watercolor and then color pencil. I'm going to use um, white paint pen is what I think I'm going to use on a lot of this. This is where I wish I had the like the fine tip um, sharpies in all the colors. I think would be the a really cool thing to use. All right, I'm going to go more red in this middle. Or orange. It's a little bit of an orange and a red. And Let's 
That's what I'm going to put in here too. I also want to put, I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I liked this color. that necessarily as much as I thought I would, but maybe when it's done, I'm just going to go with it. that a little 3D feeling. So I'm going to add some of that brighter color and kind of let it do its thing in the water. And then kind of take some of it back. some of that red again. And then let's go darker in that center. right in here. Uh, ink tense is another, the ink tense pencils is another uh, option that might work really well with this. I'm going to take a clean zig marker in a darker color and come in. almost make it look like a hole like it goes in water on it and then kind of blot it
Okay. And let's take kind of a purple color. I'm going to add it to that leftover pink that I have. pink. A little more. Now this paper is not watercolor paper, so it is starting to buckle a little. Okay, so let's leave those like that and let's cut those apart. texture as I cut this and when I drew it. The book kind of reminded me of like what I would consider like oceans entangling. ahead and taken my pencil mark off. Now you could have done your pin work and then added color, which might be how she did it. I'm not sure, you know, maybe pin work and then add some color. We'll put this in as our base, but I don't want to glue it down yet. And these are going to go on this one. We're going to have to do something right there, but we'll cover it up or paint it. Okay, I'll move those out of the way. Okay, the starfish I know I'm going to cut and flip. And I think I'm going to cut him twice. So I think what I'll do is I'll cut him out of some paper.
let's cut them out. Of here. And I didn't worry about having the perfect shape. So I think he'll make a good starfish. I don't know which one he'll go on, but let's get another one out of this extra paper right here. This is thick paper, so we'll see how it does when I collage it. And I don't know what Carol used. I'm assuming it might have been watercolors on these. On this one. I think the other one is permanent, but I'm not positive either on that. It's stamped. And it So that gives us a couple water color more. Oh, and they've got some texture to them. Okay. These are some more of those donut shapes. them. Actually, I'm not going to cut them. I think I'm going to keep them like that. Let's make them. I'm going to get the blues and teals. I think I wanted a mustard color, like the okra colors. Hi, Zandra. This is stuff that I sketched from our book. You can see I like went in and marked it. But I'm going to use it as collage pieces and then do the ink work. And I'm going to make that just darker on one side. I think I'm going to go with more of a green in the middle. Or a brown, I'm not positive. Okay, let's do another one. I'm 
And like I said, this is drawing white paper. Shimmering Lights has a pretty kind of coral color that's a little on a brownish red. There's Flare and there's Disco. Put a little Disco in there and then add a little bit of Flare. not in the whole area. Let it cool up on one side. Right, let's cut that out the rest of the way. I had another thought, but I didn't um I didn't prep it. I didn't I didn't I wasn't in the mood to do it. But I thought about a face of a girl, like a mermaid girl and this stuff in her hair. You know how you do like floral wreaths and stuff? I thought that would be pretty like if it was all like a comb on the side of her hair and then her hair would come down. Okay, so let's put those up there. All right, and then let's get back to this. Okay. Let's do, I want teals on this, I think. I'm going to do this lighter base. I'm just going to do a lighter wash across the hole. Like I said, this doesn't want to take a whole lot of color without buckling. So that will give us something light to work on. And then I'm going to come in with one of these darker colors and just let it go in these rings. This is where the markers could come into play. The zigs, they would be good for this. Or the ink tints, because you could get in these small places. Oh, okay, Draw. I hope she feels better. I know they've been fighting colds at their house, haven't they? The nasty crud and stuff. I need to track my package from England before those crazy people in the U.S send it back instead of giving me time. Okay. So let's cut that out. Sorry you're having to watch me cut. 
practice. Now you could draw the whole thing and not cut. I just was trying to do it more as a collage where I could add and subtract and if I didn't like something I could take it away. Or when I was drawing it, I didn't have to think about what was over and what was under as you built the elements. I was just drawing them separately. Now, I didn't add any leaves yet, but I think I know what I want to do for that, so. The black one's going to be the harder one. that up. We're almost done with all of the little elements and we can start putting together and playing on one of them. Okay, and these are going to be like flowers. And I want these to be kind of like a cherry red. These reds tend to be like a pink. Okay, what I'm going to do is, I know it's pink like, but I'm going to come back and add with the pen from the clear. Let's try this. With the brush marker. Okay, so that will work for those. Put that away. Let's use the markers for the next. trying to look at the elements that I have for the page 
and decide which ones are going to go where. Okay. Maybe some blue and purple. So let's put like a light blue, probably kind of a teal. Okay, that's too light. Let's go with the Brighter blue. I'm just going to put some on the craft mat. Okay. Let me just use the same marker and darken this one. I think that'll be okay for what I'm going to end up doing. It's a little dark, but I think once I use the paint pen, it will be okay. The ones that I drew with the odd number are, I think, better. This one, the ones, a couple of them, I didn't divide it up enough. Let's cut those out, and I think we're ready to collage at least one. And this was just a circle with little circles in it. And it was one of the ones I had seen 
in an overall piece that I kind of like because it was simple. I was looking for things that I thought I could manage. To draw and cut since I planned on cutting it. That doesn't have any purple. This one actually worked. Some of these worked and some didn't. So. These were another shape I had seen. It's like a filler for the background. What is it trying to do? Oh, you're talking about barbs and having a hard time. But is that something new, Dot, that you have had a hard time? But her processing to be I wonder if it's like the encoder programs or something of that nature. These are going to go over there, I think. I, I want one more thing real quick. I'm going to find some kind of turquoise paper that I have jelly printed. That might work. I think that'll work. And I'm going to do some, I want to cut some starfish on it. Okay. I'm going to cut two at one time. Just want to get the extra paper.
And I'm trying to have some small, some medium, like a variety of elements to work with. Okay, so there's those starfish. And let's get rid of that paper. Ah, let's start by getting rid of the watercolors with the glue. And I know that this is going to bleed some of it. So I'm going to focus on just the back of the elements with the glue and not the front so much. Just add the glue to the back. Did you threw up the wall home? Yeah, a little bit. I'm not right. Um, laying the base down right now and work. I mean, I've got the work done, but now I'm. the final details. Okay. Put that in there. this on here I will say one of the things I think is I can see right away that you would want you want the tone of all your elements that you're doing separately to go with your background. glue on some of these edges. And I don't care if a little bit comes out here and there. Okay, so I think that's a decent composition for the first one that we can add to. Let me put that aside and Okay. I'm not, I'm not sure which of these elements I'm going to use. I don't think I'm going to use these starfish. And I don't think I'm going to use this big circle.
Okay, now I'm going to leave those circles out. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And then I think I'll use those circles in the field. So I think it's going to be something kind of like that. clustered in three. And then, do we like that okay? And I don't think I'm going to use these. Use those on another project. Now, one of the things that I like to do that I'm not doing right now is I like to take a picture sometimes of the composition on my cell phone when I have the, the composition I want and then I can get it back exactly how I had it. this out now and I'm just gonna I'm just working from the bottom up and again I'm just putting the glue on the back of these right now this one. And this is this heavy watercolor stock that she sent me so it is a little harder to glue down. It's going to take a little more pressure. Like I said, I'm trying not to get the glue on the top right now. this third one down you know I may have to tuck that other golden one down. I know this one is over here.
pull that down just a little bit. So that paper's super thick. And then this last starfish. I might need a you know what? Let's do this. Let's cut right on a limb. a little I think I need another little one get this little good paper right here I like that better, composition-wise. It needed some change in size. All right, let's get rid of those, stick them in the scrap drawer. And I don't even mind that this one's wonky. Okay. Oh, I didn't glue those two down. These two circles. Okay, so I think that's an okay composition. All right, let's get. Now, I don't have a lot of fine tip markers. I have some zigs. I have a few pits that are fine tips. I have the white paint pen, blacks. I'll sell them. I don't know. I'm just playing. All I did was pick, see, I picked out some patterns that I liked to draw, to collage. And then I'll probably put them in a... They're not going to fit in a mat, I don't think. Okay, so let's find this one, and I'll show you what they did, and I think that's, um, it's a tone on tone. It's kind of hard to see because it's yellow. So it's just lines drawn to the center, almost. 
So that's what I'm going to basically do is I'm going to pick a center. And I want some of them to kind of bend. come around and also hit that pencil mark with the turquoise. Like I said, I think that the fine Sharpies would be good for this. Because you'd have a variety of colors for tone on tone. And the other thing that I don't have that I think would be really good is those metallic markers that I think Paula got them. For brush lettering and they weren't very expensive those would be good for doodling on the black I don't know what I'm gonna have for doodling on the black one use this other tip just to kind of hit the edges. be too dark so let's take a damp brush and let's see if I can soften that because that zig will bleed
Okay, then, so that's what I'm going to do with that one. So let's move on. Okay, with this one, I'm going to go to the white paint pen. And it, it's a lot of lines. I don't know if that's going to show up. It's probably not going to show up on the camera. Let's try a pit. Try a little bit of both. The white and the pit. Let me show you in the book again so you can sort of see. Now it's something in the middle, usually circles. It's not the same on everyone. She just uh, could be branches on top of it, a pattern on a pattern. Because they're supposed to be like a sea urchin. keeping some distance because I'm going to add some white in there. I'm not having any of the lines cross. Let me zoom the camera in because I know it's hard to see because it's so tone on tone. I think this would be like if you did this part and then you kept the pin work would be good like when you were watching TV or a movie or you want it or you're watching a stream and you want it to be doing something that was repetitive. And then I'm adding some, some of them I added like a, a, an elaborate curve to kind of add some dimension to the shape. Okay, now let's go back in with the white and add some.
these packets. Circles. And add white lines. Like I said, the white's not going to show up on camera, but you, up close you can see it. Well, I'm just going to keep coming over areas that I want to be darker. So that finishes that one. Okay, and then let's find, I have a red tip. Let's work on this one right here. I might want if I want black on red or red on red. I'm looking for the original one I saw. There's kind of the idea where the green is. Um, that was sort of what I had seen with the red and the black, but I'm not gonna, it's not colored the same. Let's try five. There's a three. I like the black as opposed to the red. that I was gravitated towards has those sort of those circles with the lines
You could even maybe doodle like this over pores and use some of the marks on pores to maybe get interesting shapes. And I think you could use that book, like the motif book, the flower motif book that Kathy showed everybody. Um, you could use some of the Zentangled books that we've seen and patterns like Janet's made or that Colleen had in that mandala book the other night to look for patterns, to look for things to do inside of them To decide if I want to do anything else to that one. Like dots or some darker color for the pit around the edge. I could use a zig marker too. if I can. The zig might have been better to use. Let's take a zig and add a line next to that. try to add some on this side.
Sebentar, sebentar. Where I'm gonna pull some of that. Uh, just add some more lines with the watercolor. I like that a lot better. Soften it. Like I said, the ink tints would probably be really good the pencils for this. Sorry, Eileen. Okay, now let's take and I'm going to take some water and see if I can. Let's add back some light. Okay. Yeah, the the watercolor helped pop it to make it more 3D. All right, this needs some help to I think what I'm going to do is put a dot right here in the middle of the ones that are done and then Put a bead of water and let them kind of bleed out and then blot them back. And maybe I should just 
That's not the color I think I want. Um, marine green is what I'm looking for. Y'all hear Tay Tay? Or Bubba? Who's it? Decided they're not getting enough attention. Deep green. Green. Marine green, there it is. A little bit on the table. Darken those just a little bit. That helps those. Pull some of that out from the middle. We need to decide what we want to do. I'll finish that one a little bit. What we want to do to this. Maybe we just want to get a red watercolor. and intensify the one side. It's peeling. here. But I like that better. Let's just go at it a little lighter. I'm going to 
let's go around each of those shapes. I think that helps. First, the brighter. I'm going to get this wet. I'm going to come a little bit darker. That gives that more texture. Kind of darken this side more. Okay. I'm happy with that and that. side of this. And put it more of a cluster of dots in the middle. Let them stain that white. Okay.
I'm probably only gonna finish this one. I really wish I had iridescent markers for this one. I think the iridescent markers would be cool for some of the fan work and the leaf work. Okay. Let's Oh, I need those actually still. Okay, these have like a stem. going to them. So we'll try a green. Then I think I'm going to try some pen. With it on either side. Some crazy lines. It sort of cross that give like a base. And I feel like they need a red around the edges. I don't think that'll work. So I just want a like a rimmed red. I'm going to hit him with a little bit of water in just a minute. And a little bit of black. I'm going to take that. Number five. Just go around the edge of them in some of the circles. Probably should have got a smaller marker for the inside. That's a little heavy. Let's try a three for the inside. I don't know, I think I'm getting close. I'm getting close, honey. Right, then let's 
go to the heavier black. I can't tell if I'm on camera or not. That's the problem zooming in. Sometimes I lose my camera where, where I'm at. Some of those here and there, and I think I'll doodle some of the fan shapes that she showed. So much for marking them. I think it needs some of this type stuff in the background in a few places. Kind of like that. Back behind here where these are. That'll give me a good base to put some on. And then I think I'll come down here and do the same thing. Fill that in, and I may even have it come through here. Okay, then let's do with this. here and do the same thing.
that finishes that fan, and then let's take a blue if it writes. The last thing I might do is, in the background, I might take the white paint pen. Night Z. And put in some of the more, um, this kind of leaf. In some of the background, I might tuck some of those in there. Almost like seaweed. It's a lot of line work. Just so I think I'll tuck in some of the that as filler. In a few places. They should take on the color of the delusions too through the white. They have kind of a lace effect. Yeah, I like the white line. Hi, Linda. I 
And I'll put some white. There's a little negative space in there. Just put some white lines. Let's put one. Here and here. You know they don't show up very well. I can see them. I know on the camera it doesn't show up very well. That's one, two, three, four. And I feel like it needs to have one. Out here. At the bottom. So there's five. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to leave it at there, right there. Let me back the camera out. So, like I said, uh, I'm going to come in and put some florally black stuff here. I may put more than just here. It may need to grow and branch out in a couple places. I need to finish this. And then I think this one will be done. So, once again, the book was... Star Branch Spiral Fan by Yelena James. I'm going to stop the